Hello, I'm Eric Reno, and this is a video for Photolia, the stock photography community. In this video, we'll be looking at JPEGs and vectors, having a look at some of the differences and how to get vectors into Photoshop. So let's jump in and see what's what. So you can see that I've chosen this image of a soccer ball or football, if you live in the UK, of course. And it's quite relevant to this time of the year with the World Cup coming up. So you might want to make some sort of poster. But you'll notice that I get a choice here of which size I'd like to download. A medium, an XXL or a V. And the V stands for vector graphic. And you can also see here that it fits any dimension. Now, this is the beauty of using vector graphics. Let's have a look and see why. You can see I've downloaded two versions of this file. One of them is a JPEG, and we could tell that by this .jpg here. And I've downloaded the vector graphic, and you can tell that because it has a .svg for scalable vector graphic. Now, by default, an SVG won't open in Photoshop, but we do have a way around that. As a member of the Creative Cloud, I also have access to Adobe Illustrator and SVGs open as native to Illustrator. So we can do that. All I have to do is double click on the image here and up it comes in Illustrator. As easy as that. Now we've zoomed right in. So let's use a shortcut that we might be used to in Photoshop. That's Control or Command and Zero to fit on screen. Now, as I bring the mouse over this image, you can see that there's some blue lines appear, and these are actually paths. If I go and get this black arrow up the top here and just click on this image, you can see all the paths that make up this image of the football. Then there's another path down here for the top of the grass and another one for another layer of grass there. So in total, there's three groups of paths, but they're all made up of individual paths too. Now, Photoshop uses paths for shapes and for text. So you'd think that we'd be able to open this directly in Photoshop, but unfortunately, SVGs aren't accepted. All we have to do is go to File, Save As, and then change the format to something we know comes into Photoshop. And an AI, an Adobe Illustrator file, most certainly will. So I'm going to choose that and click Save. And that's gone into the same file as before. I'm going to click OK here. For my purposes, that's fine. Now I'm going to scooch back over to Photoshop here, and then we can see that we've now got another file, this .ai, and that can be opened in Photoshop, and in fact, it opens as a smart object. So let's do that now. But before that, I'm going to open this version here, the JPEG, so we can compare the two. So here I have my JPEG loaded into Photoshop, now, I said at the beginning that you could scale vector graphics as much as you like, and they would stay pin sharp. And let's demonstrate this first with the JPEG. First of all, I'm going to unlock this layer, and then I'm going to go to Edit and Transform and Scale. And then holding down the Shift key, I'm just going to drag this corner down and click OK or the tick. And then I'm going to go to Edit and Transform and scale and bring that back up again and you'll see when i click the tick this time it's a bit fuzzy it's a bit out of shape there it's not pin sharp like it was to start with let's go alt or option and command z just a couple of times to go back right let's bring in that vector i'm going to go over to my finder again and all i'm going to do is just drag this in and i find that's the easiest way to combine files. Now it's asking me how I want to bring this in. For now, we won't worry ourselves too much, but you can see we have different options with the bounding box there, and we can tell Photoshop whether we want it as a page or an image. Let's click OK and carry straight on. Now it has this cross through it, meaning it's ready to be scaled because it is a smart object, but I'm gonna click the tick here and accept that as is. All right, let's turn the visibility of the JPEG off. And we can see now that all we have are the bits of this image that were part of the illustration, the paths. Right, let's go to Edit and Transform. And we can scale this. And we're going to scale it down. And click the tick. And then we go to Edit 
and transform and I'm pretty sure you're guessing what's going to happen here we bring this back up and I can bring this as big as I like I'm going to take it bigger than the original and click the tick and you'll see that it is still absolutely pin sharp we don't have access to the paths here but this is a smart object and smart objects always relate back to where the image came from now when I double click this it's going to ask me what I want to do because I've changed this very slightly in Photoshop. I'm going to say discard the changes and click OK. Now I'm going to go and get the white arrow tool and you can see that I can just come in and pick out some of the paths. I'm going to get this little highlight here and I'm going to click and just move that down and there we go. When I close this it'll ask me if I want to save it. Yep save that please and back we'll go to Photoshop and sure enough it'll update itself and that highlight now is in the middle of the ball. So we don't have direct access to the paths here in Photoshop but we can always go over to Illustrator should we wish. So there we are, we've brought a vector graphic that we downloaded from Photolia into Photoshop. I'm Eric Reno, thank you very much for joining me here. I'll see you next time. Don't forget to subscribe and check out all the videos available on the YouTube channel. Bye bye for now.